What is going on, guys? Welcome on to today's FanDuel Hurry Up. My name is Austin Swaim, and with the NBA Finals about to wrap up, July is creeping up on us, and that means one of the favorite times of the year for NBA drama, free agency upon us. And today we're going to be talking about three free agent destinations for one of the marquee guys on the market this year. The real deal, Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards can opt into a player option with Washington, or he can opt out or do a variety of things as we've seen in the past. I am going to give you three of my favorite destinations for Bradley Beal. Beal. He says winning championships is his ultimate goal. I think these do all of that, but they're also pretty fun in daily fantasy basketball as well. And the first spot that I'm looking at is not a place that is common sense. It's not a team with a bunch of cap space right now. I'm actually looking at the Los Angeles Clippers, and we have seen wild, unexpected contenders emerge before here. You saw Jimmy Butler force a sign and trade to Miami from Philadelphia, which Philadelphia agreed to because they'd rather get something rather than nothing. I think the Clippers are an incredibly interesting spot for Beal. You could line up the contract so Washington would want to do it so they could get back Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard, Ivica Zubac. There's some good pieces that could help their team that could come back the other way if Beal really wants to go there. And ultimately, Clippers owner Steve Ballmer, he is the richest owner in the NBA. He's a big spender, big swing guy. This would make them overwhelming favorites in the West. They were already in the play-in, missing Kawhi Leonard all of last year and Paul George for 65% of the year. And there are some rumors around the Clippers that they're not thrilled with how Kawhi Leonard handles his ACL recovery. His availability, kind of aloof personality, wasn't their favorite. And I think this could also be a step toward planning toward a new phase of Clipper basketball where they keep George and Bradley Beal if that relationship goes sour. You can definitely contend for a title with just those two. And from a fantasy perspective, I think Beal is walking to, into a place where he can get a lot of shots. The most efficient offense in the league would be in Los Angeles. Will You look at the last time that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George shared the floor together in the regular season, Lou Williams still had a 25.1% usage rate. There are shots to be had. These guys are not selfish. And inevitably, of course, Kawhi Leonard will rest back-to-backs. Paul George may miss a few games along the way. Bradley Beal will absolutely be able to contribute as one of the leading, if not the leading, scorers on the Clippers that would be, no doubt, the favorites out West if they could snag him. But Probably a more realistic spot lies in Miami out east, and we, that is the most common spot you would be able connected to right now. What we saw so badly in the Eastern Conference Finals was that Miami doesn't have a second reliable scorer outside of Jimmy Butler come playoff time because Tyler Hero, 17.5 points for 36 minutes, great six-man-of-the-year guy defensive turnstile, and that's a problem for Miami come the playoffs. This would probably be the most appealing return package for Washington if they worked with Beal in that regard because they would get Hero to fill his scoring right away. They'd probably get a veteran point guard in Kyle Lowry to make the contracts work, and they could also get either Duncan Robinson or Omer Yurchevin as well. Jimmy Butler is not a guy that wants to dominate the ball. Had just a 26.7% usage rate. That was actually lower than Tyler Hero's 28.7%. Mark here. Beal will do that. He will carry the offensive side of the ball. Butler can save, manage his knee issues, whereas, bam, Butler, P.J. Tucker, they can make for make up for Bradley Beal on that end, and Beal gives them a dynamite top-scoring option to a team that already was in the Eastern Conference Finals this year, and their opponent in the Eastern Conference Finals, to me, should not be ruled out as well here. That is ba- the Boston Celtics. Now, Boston is not done and buried in the NBA Finals yet, but you can see they are struggling. They feel just a little bit away. They feel one primary ball handler, one offensive juggernaut away Jason Tatum has the playoff record for turnovers, trying to force himself into that role. Boston has the fifth most turnovers per game in NBA Finals history. They need a guy that can fill that role. You look at Beal on Washington, only three and a half turnovers per game, pretty much having the ball in his hand every possession. Boston, unlike Miami, unlike the Clippers, and or the Lakers, who's another team you'll probably hear connected to Beal because he's uh, clutch sports of LeBron James, is a fan of Beal. They have picks. Boston has picks. They could give their 2023 pick, 2024, 2025, to Washington and keep most of their pieces. Smart, Tatum, Brown, Robert Williams. They have the roster construction where they could even get aggressive and add Kristaps Porzingis to that deal as a few minutes off the bench as a dynamic big that can score for them. They could get aggressive. The biggest thing about these last two destinations, Miami and Boston, Beal would be the number one guy. I love Jason Tatum. He is not the 31 points a game that we saw from the last full season of Bradley Beal on a 53.2% effective field goal rate. Bradley Beal was one of the most dynamic offensive guys in the league. Tatum's not quite there. He's better defensively, but that, those two and Jalen Brown would be one dynamite of a package. I would choose the Clippers just because the West is a little bit weaker at the top. They'd be such overwhelming favorites, but I don't think Bradley Beal can go wrong with any of these three picks.